Our first question comes from Hadi, a principal engineer in aerospace. And her question is this, my boss is micromanaging me and it makes it hard for me to do my job. Plus it's frustrating and it kills my motivation. How do you handle a micromanaging leader? Whew. <laughs> <laughs> bom, bom, bom. Micromanaging. Wow. <laughs> wow. 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 Well, this is a really powerful question and it comes up at all levels. You know, we've got individual contributors who are two or three years into their career asking this question. And I have director level clients who have VPs above them who are micromanaging them asking this question. So you don't get to a point where you can be immune from this one. It often rears its head. And Hadi, I appreciate the question. Let me address a couple of pieces. First, a principle that comes into play, and I would encourage, you know, Daniel, as you think about this, sometimes you hear a question like this and you only think about micromanagement, but I want you to zoom out as I'm talking about this because this principle applies to a lot more than just micromanagement. And it's called the self-fulfilling belief cycle. How do you believe today that your boss is a micromanager? And my guess is along with those beliefs, are some thoughts, some frustrating thoughts. Like, this is really annoying. Do you not trust me? Do you not uh, understand the capabilities that I bring to the table? Do you not realize that you're suffocating me, that I'm not able to do my best work? Like, this is disengaging. I don't like this. There's a lot of pieces that come with that belief. Well, in our lives, our beliefs trigger actions. What we believe will change what we do. So let's take this example and play it out. If somebody's micromanaging me, and I believe that you're a micromanager and that you're annoying and that you're bothering me and that you're frustrating and that you're a source of problems and pain in my life, what type of actions are going to flow from those thoughts, those beliefs? Well, I can tell you some examples from clients I've worked with. We start avoiding our boss because I don't want them in my shorts all the time. I don't want to check my emails when my boss sends them because I'm dreading that next set of micromanaging questions they want answers to. I might even screen their call on my phone because I don't have time for their shenanigans. I need to do my work, so I'm dodging their phone calls. These kinds of things can happen. Sometimes subconsciously, you don't even realize that you're avoiding that person because they're a source of pain in your life and in your career. You might even respond with an action of, gossiping or talking about it with other people. Like, gosh, can you believe so-and-so is such a micromanager? This is so annoying. Here's the thing. Your actions become the fuel for other people's beliefs. So here's the cycle. I mentioned the self-fulfilling belief cycle. Here's the whole thing. I'll zoom out. Your beliefs become your actions. Your actions reinforce or create other people's beliefs. And other people's beliefs become their actions, and their actions reinforce your beliefs. So let's keep going. If Hadi's out there dodging his boss, avoiding his boss, gossiping to other peers about his boss, doing these things like screening calls, what do you think his boss is going to believe? Hadi's screening my calls. Hadi's not responding to my emails quickly. Hadi's acting really frustrated and agitated. I'm not sure what's going on here. What if something is wrong? What if Hadi's hiding something from me? What if Hadi needs help and he's not telling me? Well, guess what his boss is going to do? He's going to try twice as hard to get in touch with him. He's going to schedule twice as many meetings and he's going to ask twice as many questions because he's got all this uncertainty and he's picking up all this weird energy from Hadi about what's going on. And so those actions now do what? Reinforce Hadi's original fear that he's got this terrible micromanaging boss. You can play this out in so many ways. One other like really simple example. Let's say you believe that you have no value to contribute on the team. You're new to the team and you're not able to contribute value. That's what you believe. Now you go to a big meeting. What do you do in that meeting? Well, you stay in the corner. You don't speak up. You keep your thoughts to yourself because you believe you have nothing to add of value. Well, guess what? Everybody else in that meeting sees your actions. Daniel didn't contribute. Daniel was just quiet in the corner. What do they believe about Daniel if that's what they see? Daniel doesn't have much to say. Daniel doesn't have much to contribute. So what do they do? They stop inviting you to meetings because you don't ever contribute. You don't have much to say. They don't come ask you for your opinion because you never speak up. 
What does that tell you? My team never asks for my opinion. I don't get invited to the important meetings. I must have nothing to contribute. And it reinforces your original belief. This plays out in our lives all the time, the self-fulfilling prophecy or the self-fulfilling belief cycle. So my first and most important insight for you, Hadi, with that in mind, is we want to begin changing our beliefs and being open to the possibility, maybe your boss has a compelling, important reason for their behavior. Maybe they don't actually know how this is affecting you. Maybe they do have a lot of intelligence and a lot of leadership skills and acumen that we're just not seeing because we're frustrated by the micromanaging behavior. And what if it were possible to have a really, really constructive and working relationship with that leader because they do have good intentions? They do want to see you succeed. They're not out to get you. They're, they didn't wake up this morning and their first thought being, how can I make Hadi's life miserable today? How can I micromanage Hadi today? That probably didn't happen. And if we can shift that, it's going to allow you to show up differently in your own actions. Change the way your boss sees and thinks about you, which will then change his actions, and we can break the cycle. Let me pause there for a second, Daniel. Does that make sense? Did I make that clear? Or how could I help maybe from your perspective to articulate that? What do you think? Well, let me rewind here. My uh, my mind's still a little traumatized of all the different uh, situations of being micromanaged. <laughs> so let me recover from that. <laughs> um, oh, man. Okay. So I think what I heard you say is approach it with some curiosity and some grace. I love that. Absolutely. Curiosity That's hard. and grace. That is hard. <laughs> which is a totally different mindset and a different belief than my boss is a micromanager and this is a problem and I need to change this now, right? That's a very different energy, a different set of beliefs and thoughts mm. to start this from. Now, I'm sure if I were Hadi, I'd be frustrated, like, give me some tactics, tell me what to do. <laughs> cool principle, I can see how that's true, but now what? So let me just give a couple of ideas. One of the things that most people do when they're being micromanaged is resist it. They want to somehow break that pattern quickly and tell their boss to stop doing it. Well, here's one thing you can experiment with with micromanagement. What if you gave your leader 